Hello brothers and sisters, this is Pastor Angelo Cantuba once again on our, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is our 15th uh, devotional uh, and uh, today is Wednesday, third day of the week and makita uh, natin no, uh, celebrate ang buong mundo ngayon halos na Holy Week, ang mga uh, Christian Uh, denominations yung mga may religion na Christianity hindi particularly ang mga Protestant or mga born again Christians but other religious groups like Catholics and other groups who uh, profess as Christianity in their religion ay eh, sinaselebrate ang Holy Week ngayon and some people call it uh, yung araw ngayon is Holy Wednesday or some people call it Spy Wednesday Uh, bakit nga ba ito tinawag na Holy Wednesday or Spy Wednesday? Kasi ito po yung panahon na pinaniniwalaan ng marami uh, na panahon kung saan uh, si Judas ay nagsimulang makipag-usap sa mga uh, pariseyo, sa mga uh, trumaydor kay uh, nag uh, utos kay Judas na trumaydor sa Panginoon Yesus yung mga teachers of the law so kaya siya tinawag ng Spy Wednesday and uh, bakit siya Holy Wednesday uh, tignan natin ano yung transpire uh, but not particularly ito mismo yung araw na yun no? kasi alam naman natin kakaiba po ang Roman calendar kakaiba ang cultural uh, implications ng mga dates and chronological order ng mga pangyayari sa Biblia at uh, kailangan natin to tignan uh, not so much about the specific day pero yung significance nung nangyari sa araw na yon. so let me uh, lead you into prayer let's all bow down Father we thank you for this day Lord we pray for your guidance to us as we study this word may we catch Lord God yung lesson Panginoon na nais mong ituro sa amin sa buhay ng mga tao mababanggit ngayon at higit sa lahat Panginoon let uh, our hearts be humble enough Lord to accept your correction your uh, rebuke your encouragement your love uh, through your word and uh, continue to guide us Lord as we study. In Jesus name we pray Amen and Amen Our text is in John chapter 12 verses 1 to 8 Let me read it for you Six days before the Passover Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived whom Jesus had raised from the dead Here, here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. When Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a, day, a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, as a keeper of the money bag. He was used to, him, to help himself to what was put into it. Verse 7, Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me palaing pagkabasa ng salita ng Diyos. Ngayon po, may mga confusion sa mga verses ito na binasa natin. No? Uh, some people believe na may discrepancy kung sino ba itong Mary na ito na tinutukoy at yung another woman na nag-anoint kay Christ. Uh, and very similar yung, pag, yung pagkakakwento. No? Pero gusto natin makita, may mga parallel verses po dito para linawin tayo. Linawan tayo sa kung sino ba si Mary at magkaparehas ba yung taong yon na una nag na una nag anoint kay Christ at yung uh, sumunod no ito si Mary so basahin muna natin parallel verse in Matthew chapter 26 verses 6 to 13 verse 6 while Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of expensive perfume which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table when the disciples saw this they were indignant why they were indignant why this waste they asked this perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor aware of this jesus said to them why are you bothering this woman she has done a beautiful thing to me the poor you will always have with you but you will not always have me 
when she poured out when she poured this perfume on my body she did it to prepare me for burial truly i tell you wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world what she has done will also be told in memory of her another parallel verse para mas malinaw in mark chapter 14 verses 3 to 11 same mary same uh, location same uh, um, same thing yun ang ha- na- nangyari sa paghahataw na ito. Verse 3. Well, he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper. A woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, Jesus said. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you always have with you, and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could do. She poured perfume on, on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Verse 10, And then Jesus, Judas Iscariot in one of the twelve went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and pro- promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. So, uh, uh, basa po natin mga parallel verses. Gusto ko lang pagtibayin yung difference at yung pa- pagkakaparehas. No? Yung sa pagkakataon po binasa natin, uh, it is Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, na nag kay Christ. And this happened... Uh, sabi, six days before the Passover in the home of Simon the leper. Ngayon naman po, uh, si, uh, yung, yung isang babae na nag kay Christ, it happened a year before the Passion Week or the, a year before Jesus Christ died. Same po yung halos yung nangyari, alabaster jar, pinor yung, quart, yung, yung perfume at uh, inanoint niya si Christ. Pero ang pagkakaiba po, this woman is a sinful woman. Uh, different kay Mary. Um, hindi naman sa walang kasalanan si Mary, no? Dahil no, no one is good, not even one. Alam natin yan, all have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. Pero kakaiba yung character ng isang, isang babaeng ito because she was identified as an adulterer. Uh, a woman, uh, as a sinful woman. At alam natin, pag yun ang binanggit, pag sinful woman, uh, siya ay nakikiapid or meron, uh, maybe she is a prostitute or uh, merong kalaguyo ganun ang pagkakilala sa kanya so this Mary is different this is the same Mary na pinagalitan ng ate niya ni Martha na bakit ka uh, nakaupo lang dyan habang ako nag na uh, mag prepare ng kakainin uh, sabi niya Jesus sabi mo nga sa kapatid ko na tulungan ako uh, she, siya yung sariling baba I mean same woman na kinausap ni Martha, magkakapatid po sila ni Lazarus. Ngayon, gusto ko establish na ang uh, ginamit po na perfume na pinor sa ulo ni Christ, eh, para may confusion, sabi sa una sa head uh, sa iba naman sa, sa feet uh, sa iba naman uh, sa body ano-ano po nangyari so, uh, hindi natin ito titignan as something confusing kasi hindi nagko-contradict but all, all of the account online established that there was a perfume that was poured or anointed uh, si Christ ng isang perfume. So, ang anointing po ng oil o ng perfume, pag sinabing i-anoint, eh, nagsisimula po sa ulo talaga yan. At kung ganun kalaki o karami yung pinor, ito po ibababa sa kanyang katawan hanggang sa kanyang paa. Uh, kung siya ay nakatayo pero ang sabi po dito nakarecline siya so maari po na some of the perfume was poured on the head some on the body and some on the feet at uh, makita rin natin dito no uh, binanggit po sa parallel verse natin uh, sa verse um, uh, teka lang po ah. tignan po natin sa Uh, Matthew 26 uh, Alabaster jar po ang ginamit uh, Ito pong alabaster jar ay eh, pinaniniwalaan nila na isang mamahaling lalagyan Sa iba po ay eh, alabaster box Sa ibang version ng Bible mabasa alabaster box Yung iba naman alabaster jar ba flask 
No, bakit po ito yung terminology? Consistent po yan, ito po yung lalagyan. Maaring hugi square siya kung baka siya tinatawag ng box, pero consistent po that it is made of an alabaster. Alabaster is a precious stone na kung saan ito po ay may kita rin sa Old Testament na ginamit po pang design ng temple na ginawa ni Solomon. So, mamahalin po itong stone na to. It is very perfect uh, for keeping perfume or any oil na fresh at uh, kumbaga mamahaling lalagyan para sa isang mamahaling langis or mamahaling pabango. Kaya ito po yung pinag-uusapan dito. And makita rin natin na um, sabi dito sa verse uh, sa Mark chapter 14 uh, sabi po she broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head while we have uh, read in uh, John 12 verse 3 She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. Nakita natin, no? Head, hair. And then, sa sumunod ng mga verse, ang sabi, um, sabi po dito sa verse uh, 7, This is probably it was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. No? Para sa kanyang kamatayan. Pero sa ibang parallel verses din po, binanggit din po yung pagsagot ni Kristo pero may ginamit po siyang word dito na baaring makakonfuse sa ibang nagbabasa ng Biblia. Ang sabi po uh, sa verse 8, she did what she could do as uh, nasa ano po ako no? Mark chapter 14 verse 8. She did what she could do. She, uh, sorry. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. So, ano ba talagang totoo? Siya ba ay sa ulo uh, binuhusan ng perfume sa uh, katawan o sa paa at uh, nabanggit ko na po kanina ang anointing po nagsisimula sa ulo at maaari ding binuhusan siya sa katawan at ikit sa lahat, sa paa at sa paa po nagtapos at ang pinangunas po ay yung buhok ni Mary at makita rin po natin dito no? uh, sabi po, Mary took uh, uh, sa verse 3 ng John 12, Mary took a, about a pint of pure nard Pure nard po ang ginamit na word dito. Uh, yung uh, unexpensive perfume. So, na natin maintindihan, ano ba yung nard? What is a nard? Or sa ibang version po, sa King James, ang ginamit po na word ay spike nard. Spike nard po ay isang uri ng halaman. No? Ito po ay isang perfume na kung saan uh, mamahalin po siya. Hindi siya basta-basta. Kagaya po siya ng mga essential oil. At kakaiba po yung amoy nito. is very aromatic at Uh, ito po ay ma- talagang makapit sa balat yung amoy at sa buhok. Kaya makita natin dito no, ang ang pinangpunas ni Mary ay yung kanyang buhok sa paana ni Kristo. Parang ang weird or parang titigdan natin. Why would someone do that? Why, why would anyone do that? Because makita natin yung buhok po sa pag-aaral po sa science, nag-absorb po ito ng oil no. Uh, sa dagat po pag may oil spill yung mga barko pag uh, kumalat yung kanilang langis ang ginagamit po no yung mga preso nagpapakalbo sila iipunin yung buhok at ginagamit po nila yon para absorbent ng mga oil so uh, very absorbent po yung uh, skin at yung buhok sa oil at makita natin doon it makes sense bakit yung buhok ang ginamit niya no at Uh, may significance pa tayo makita dyan mamaya so una na-establish natin yung identity ni Mary na-establish natin yung kahalagahan nung, uh, nung oil na ginamit niya it is an expensive perfume it is a nard or uh, spike nard uh, ibang tawag nila doon at uh, nakita rin natin, nabasa natin that uh, yung content na binuhos niya eh, kasing halaga po ng isang taong sweldo ganun po ito kamahal kaya po sabi ng ibang mga scholar sa pag-aaral nila ito po ay dowry ni Mary kapag sabing dowry ito yung binabayad para makapag-asawa ko kumbaga. sa mga kultura lalo sa mga hudyo nangyayari kung minsan na meron silang binabayarang dowry para makapagpakasal uh, sa ibang ano rin po kultura sa uh, Pilipino may ganyan din po no uh, 
kumbaga magpapa ang, ang babae ang kumbaga sa pagkain o kung ano pa man uh, sa India may dowry din para mga pag-asawa ka yung magulang ng papangasawa mo magre-request o bilihan mo muna na mo muna kami ng kotse para makapag-asawa ka mapangasawa mo yung as- anak namin lalaki o minsan ganun po at sa iba naman po ang sa kanilang pag-aaral kung hindi man ito dowry ni Mary ito po ay kanyang mana ganun po ito ka-expensive isipin nyo Uh, kung kumikita ka, sabihin na natin ng 8,000 a month. Yung sabi nung isang mahirap eh, bitin pa daw sa one week nila. Ng 8,000 a month ang kita mo, times 12 mo yon ganun kamahal yung perfume. Kung 8,000 a month ang basihan, no? Pero hindi eh, hindi lang yan, no? So, mas makita natin that the perfume is very expensive. At sa panahon nila, napakamamahalin po ng mga perfume for... Um, the purpose of preserver, uh, pang-preserve ng mga katawan or kung ano pa man no? so nagiging monetary value nila yon. so aside from that the alabaster jar is very expensive mamahalin po ito at kapag ito po ilalagyan ng perfume ginagamitan po nila ito ng wax para takpan yung perfume uh, I mean yung uh, jar para hindi tumapon yung oil kung kailan mo lang gustong gamitin dun mo lang siya tatanggalin yung wax kaya uh, sabi bini-break yung alabaster jar no at mamahalin niya once na binasag mo ito or tinanggal mo yung jar minsan nasisira na bumababa na yung value no unless uh, may craftsman na kayang mag-repair ng mga bagay na yun so yung ginawa ni Mary is very significant ito ito isang bagay na hindi cheap hindi siya uh, maliit na bagay because ito ay napaka significant to the point na nagreklamo una nakita natin no sa verse 4 uh, ng John chapter 12 one of his disciples Judas Iscariot ay eh, nagreklamo bakit niyo pinapayagan na itapon yon eh samantalang pwede nating ibenta yan para sa mahihirap paano naman po sa ibang verses sabi doon the disciples plural no so gusto nating linawin na wala pong again walang discrepancy dito maaring hindi pala maaari, no? pinapakita sa ibang verse na all of them agreed. O nga naman, mahal yan. Pag binenta natin, mas mapapakinabangan pa yung pinagkakitaan. All of them uh, agreed, or most of them, most of the disciples, if not all, agreed sa sentimiento ni Judas. But it is Judas who has a different take on the situation. Anong heart ng ibang disipulo? Para sa mahirap. Kung benta natin yan, babigi pa sana sa mahirap, may abuloy pa. Siya kakaiba po. Sabi sa verse 5, wasn't dun, uh, sa John 12 verse 5, Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money, of, of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Ang gusto niya kasi, Ibenta yon at yung pinagbentahan, itatakbo na niya. Because this is the day na kung saan nakikita na niya na ay wala nang patutunguhan to. Yung kanyang pananampalataya kay Kristo ay hindi talaga totoo. Siya ay false convert or false disciple, disciple ni Christ. At ang gusto niya lang ay yung benepisyo ni Kristo. Imagine, narinig niya lahat ng sermon ni Christ. But still, he was a betrayer. Ang gusto niya yung pera. Kaya after this, sa verse 7, uh, sorry, uh, sa uh, punta po tayo sa math, um, Mark chapter uh, 14, verse 10, Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money, so he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Sabi po dito, eh, eh after nung nakita niyang nasayang yung ano sa paningin niya eh ibang paraan na lang pagkakitaan niya ibebenta niya si Kristo. So ito po yung character dito ni Judas at yun naman ang character ni Mary kanina na pag-usapan natin. Ngayon, doon na tayo sa implication. What can we learn about this? Unang-una, makita natin si Mary po ay consistent. When Jesus Christ visited their house before, no, sa buhay ni Mary, kasama niya si Martha, sabi doon Si Mary po eh nakaupo sa paanan ni Kristo. Nakikinig habang yung kanyang ate ay abalang-abala sa pag-aasikaso ng makakain o nung kano pa man ng mga bisita, no. Nakita natin yung character ni Mary. She knows Christ. She knows her priorities. 
kilala niya kung ano ang kanyang pinagpapalit sa mga bagay sa paligid niya. Alam niya na mas mahalaga umupo sa harapan ni Kristo. At ito po ay inaffirm ni Christ. Sabi niya, Mary knew. Alam niya kung ano yung pinakamahalaga. What is important? Ano yung dapat i-prioritize? Alam ni Mary. Now, not to put Martha in a bad light, nagsisipag din po siya, pero laging pinakikita sa atin na merong mas mahalaga lagi. Ang daming importante sa buhay natin, ang daming importante sa paligid natin. Ang daming priorities. Pero at the end of the day, there's only one there's only one thing na pinakaimportante dapat sa buhay natin. And if we say that we love Christ, if we say that he, he is uh, we are his disciples, then we must know our priorities. Do we spend time with Christ na para bang lahat na ng bagay sa paligid natin eh it doesn't matter na. Nandun ba tayo sa point na yun? Now, I'm not saying na pabayaan mo na yung paligid mo. Huwag ka na magtrabaho, huwag ka na mag-aral. Uh, huwag mo na asikaw sa iyong pamilya mo. Mag-aral ka lang salita ng Diyos. Hindi po yun. Pero pinakita po dito ni Mary, she knows. Alam niya ako anong priority niya. And her priority is Christ. Ang kinaiba naman po dito sa parallel dito kay Judas, si Judas lagi niyang kasama. Si Christ. Sabi ko nga kanina, narinig niya lahat ng sermon ni Christ, pero hindi niya pinahahalagahan si Kristo. Kung makita po natin sa mga pag-aaral natin, no, ang alabaster jar na pinanggalingan ng perfume ay eh, mamahalin. Kas, pati yung perfume na content, pag pinagsama po ay eh, kasing mahal nung isang taong sweldo ng isang tao. Ganon po ka mahal. Ganoon pinahalagahan ni Mary si Christ. Ano pong kinaiba nila kay Judas? Si Judas po, nung binetray niya si Christ, binenta niya si Judas with 30 pieces of silver. Pag tingnan natin, dami na nun ah. Pero hindi natin naintindihan. 30 pieces of silver is equals to a price of a slave. Ang 30 pieces of silver po ay ganun lang po ang halaga ng isang alipin pag bibili ka. Ng isang alipin. So ang tingin lang ni, ni, ni Judas kay Kristo ay isang alipin, isang mababa uh, na nilalang ang tingin niya kay Kristo, hindi niya pinahahalagahan. Makita natin dito yung difference and while we um, meditate on this tingnan natin yung mga pangyayari no ito po isang bagay na kung saan check natin yung ating pamumuhay ngayon ano ba yung gusto natin sa Kristyanismo in our Christian life do we really value Christ do, are we really passionate about Christ na alam natin yung value niya sa buhay natin ay eh, mas mahalaga pa kaysa sa ating sariling buhay Makita natin dito na ang kinaiba ni Judas at ni Mary is yung pagpapahalaga nila kay Christ. And I believe that anyone who is in Christ values Christ. Pinahahalagahan si Kristo. Gayun din naman ano, si Martha, si Lazarus, yung mga disipulo, pinahahalagahan din naman si Kristo. But there is such a time na sa ating pag-spend ng time sa Panginoon, the more that we spend time in His uh, Kumbaga sa kanyang paanan, and the more na nakikita natin yung value ni Christ. Bakit may mga tao parang pinagpapalit kang si Kristo ng uh, napakasimpleng paraan lang? Bawa, kung may choice ka, mag ka ng Bible study, prayer meeting, or church service, for sure, some of us would think, ah, marami namang susunod na linggo, marami namang susunod na araw for Bible study. Minsan lang naman to. Bakit kaya gano'n, no? Dumarating lagi sa point ng pinagpapalit natin ay yung gawain ng Panginoon. Minsan nuunahin natin yung mga bagay na akala natin mas mahalaga. Pero kagaya ngayon sa nangyari sa atin, no? Narirealize natin at pinarirealize sa atin ng Panginoon na yung mga akala natin mahalaga, it's not that significant. Yung pinagpapalit mo tuwing linggo, tuwing Bible study at kung ano-ano pang mga araw na may gawain ng Panginoon, Nasa na ngayon? Nasa na yung trabaho mo? Nasa na yung eskwela mo? Nasa na yung jowa mo? Hindi <laughs> mo mapuntahan. <laughs> no? Hindi sa sinasabi kung masama yung mga bagay na yun, no? Pero kapag yung mga bagay eh hindi natin nakikita sa tamang paraan o no? tamang perspektibo, hindi natin nakikita rin yung tamang value ni Christ sa buhay natin. It's not that we betray Christ if we don't go to church, but it reveals our priorities. It's not that that we, we betray Christ when we don't study His Word enough. 
or hindi siya hindi tayo nagbaba ba nag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. Makes us a bad disciple. Kung talagang Kristiyano tayo, hindi rin tayo makakatiis, makoconvict tayo. But if you are not really saved, you will not have any passion for the word. You will not have any hunger for the word. Maaring maliit, no? Gano'n pa kaikli or kaliit ang iyong gutom sa salita ng Diyos. Pero ibang usapan yung wala talaga. So at this point, brothers and sisters, check natin, no? Lagi tayo nag-heart check itong uh, COVID-19 enhanced community lockdown. Eh, tignan natin. Check natin. Ano ba talagang priorities ko sa mundong ito? Do I prioritize Christ? Another thing, when Mary poured out the alabaster uh, the uh, perfume on the alabaster jar sa ulo katawan at paanan ni Kristo ang pinapunas po niya sa paanan ni Kristo yung kanyang sariling buho for days hindi naman sila araw-araw naliligo Jesus Christ was smelling good kumbaga at yung association sa amoy na yun ay eh, nandun din kay Mary inabsorb ng buhok niya yung oil yung perfume that perfume na so pungent, so strong na uh, hindi mapagkakaila na ah, dumaan si Kristo ah, dumaan si Mary pero sino pong mas malakas yung amoy, mas malakas yung aroma, syempre yung naligo pero kung gusto kong i-point out dito no, nothing mystical about it pero may gusto kong i-point out na truth dito Mary wants to be associated with Christ to the point na hindi siya nahihiya na mismong buhok niya yung gagamitin niya pang punas ng paa ni Kristo. Alam niyo kung gano'ng kadumi ng paa kapag nasa Middle East ka? Puro alikabok, nakasandalyos ka, maghapong ka, palakad-lakad, tapos bubuhusan ng oil. Can you imagine this women, uh, kayong mga women na nakikinig, mga girls na nakikinig, can you imagine your hair being poured with oil tapos ipupunas mo sa paanan ng isang maalikabok na paa? Can you imagine the dirt? Can you imagine the uh, y- yung yung dumi na maaring kumapit sa buhok mo? Hindi niya nilenta na yung mga kapatid. It's not because it's gross or kadiri yung ginawa niya. He, he cared so much about Christ. He cared so much about uh, yung si Christ ang kanyang priority at minamahal niya si Kristo. At gusto niyang kahit papano no, ma-associate yung sarili niya, some part of her will be part of Christ because Christ is all of her. Ulitin ko po ah. Nais niya sana. Some part of me would be part of Christ. Tandaan natin. Sabi ni Kristo, if you don't eat my body and drink my blood, you have no part of me. You're not worthy to be called my disciple. Ito po kakaiba. Yung association ng amoy ni Jesus Christ after that if it went on for days. At sing panahon na takot na takot yung mga disipulo na ma-associate kay Christ. Mary braved that persecution. Naging matapang siya. Nakita niya kasi yung value ni Christ sa buhay niya. Now, so ba nating i-lift up si Mary dito at purihin? Wow, praise Mary? No, it's not that. But rather, it is Jesus Christ himself who justified her. Ang nagtanggol sa kanya. Ano pong sabi? After inihusgahan siya ng mga disipulo, especially ni Judas, ang sabi ni Jesus Christ, verse 7, Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. She was being prepared and as well as the perfume for the death of Christ. Verse 8, you will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Nariterate dito ni Christ, pinapahalagahan niyo may mahihirap. O sige, matagal niyo sila makasama, pero ako hindi niyo makakasama ng matagal. Mary knew that. Alam niya sa mga panahong nagsasabi si Kristo ng kanyang mga prophecy about his death. She listened. She paid attention. At alam niya na lalapit na ang kamatay ni Kristo. It's not that she is prophetic. But she can understand Christ. Ganun po yung pakikinig ni Mary sa kanya. Ganun yung association ni Mary sa kanya. Ganun po, kaklose si Mary kay Christ. Because he loved Christ and Christ loved her. To the point na pinagtatanggol siya ng Panginoon. Nakatawa po, no, pag-iisipin natin. Na ito mga pagkakataon ngayon sa panahon natin. Oh, most of the world is celebrating Holy Week. 
at pinag-aaralan natin ito ngayon ang dami mga verses ang daming mga information tayong narinig pero after this devotional gusto kong maintindihan natin how do we value Christ makita natin paano pa natin pinahalagahan si Kristo sa buhay natin would we allow ourselves to be associated with a man crucified who died on the, on the cross for our sins or would we betray him uh, sa pong malinaw at none of the believers in Christ will continue to betray him tandaan natin si Pedro po binetray din siya yun nga lang, kinaiba, Jesus was praying for Peter. Sabi ni Jesus Christ kay Peter, bago siya mamatay, sabi niya, o bago siya arrestuhin, Peter, the devil wants to sift you. He wants to have you. But don't worry, I am praying for you. Jesus Christ know kung sino yung nasa kanya. At yung nasa kanya ay magpapatuloy sa kanya. So sa atin pong devotion ngayon, let us know our priorities and our priority should be Christ first and foremost we should know that whenever we fall into sin we betray Christ and those betrayal those times na tayo nagkakasala at mga bagsak sa ating uh, mga, mga kasalanan at sa ating mga lusts and desires sa mundong ito we have Christ as our Savior we have Christ as someone who we can run to and we can confess our sins. Hindi niya tayo itataboy. Brothers and sisters, may this be comforting to us. That as we continue to seek our hearts and know kung gaano ba tayo kalayo sa Panginoon at patuloy natin nilapit ang ating mga sarili sa Panginoon while He can be found, may this be comforting to us. Na kung minsan nakakalimutan natin yung mga priorities natin, especially our our priority Uh, for Christ na tat- nananatili siyang tapat sa atin at hindi niya hahayaan tayong patuloy sa ganung gawin hindi niya tayong hahayaan na magpatuloy lang sa pagbagsak kaya ito mga devotionals na to I pray this is uh, encouraging rebuking helping you and admonishing you to be more Christ-like God bless you brothers and sisters let's all bow down and pray Father we thank you for your word Lord, uh, dalangin ko, Panginoon, na inyo pong katalinuhan na patunyo po igawad sa amin na maintindihan namin ang significance ng story na ito, Panginoon. May we know our priorities, Lord God. May we put you on top of all priorities of our lives. And in times, Lord God, na bumabag sa kami kagaya ni Pedro, Panginoon, wag nawa kami matulad kay Judas. Kundi kagaya ni Pedro, Panginoon, ikaw din ang nag affirm sa kanya. Ikaw rin ang nag-restore sa Kanya. Sa panahon ngayon, Panginoon, that we are seeking You. We are uh, studying Your Word. Lord, we pray na i-convict mo mga puso namin sa mga bagay na dapat namin i-repent sa iyo. For we know, Lord, that if we confess our sins, You are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all our righteousness. And we can enjoy that fellowship with You. Enjoy our fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Enjoy, Lord God, yung... yung, yung Uh, joy of our salvation so we pray Lord grant us repentance encourage us and change us Father we thank you for everything be glorified in Jesus name we pray Amen and Amen God bless your brothers and sisters and enjoy the rest of the day